Okay, so where is Jesus in Exodus? Um, well, there's lots of different ways we can see him. Um, one is when it talks about the Passover lamb, uh, which is a spotless lamb sacrificed for the sin of the people. Uh, and later, Jesus was the sinless lamb of God. You know, when John the Baptist first saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So he knew. Uh, and that's what Jesus was when he died on the cross. He was the lamb of God. Uh, then other things that we see Jesus in are like the tabernacle where God and man can meet. And that's what Jesus is. It's the bridge between the gap between God and man. That's where we can meet God is through Jesus. Besides the tabernacle as a whole, um, other things in the tabernacle were like a type of Christ, including the furniture. There was the table of the showbread, and uh, Jesus is the bread of life. There's the Ark of the Covenant. There is uh, the brazen altar, which was uh, where sacrifices for sin were made. And also in um, Exodus, we can look at we can look at the um, Similarities between Moses and Jesus. So I'm just going to read through some of these, okay, because I found them kind of interesting. So Moses was the first mediator between God and man, and Jesus is the final mediator between God and man. Moses hid in Egypt as a child, and Jesus hid in Egypt as a child, which you'll see when we get to the Gospels. Uh, the leader of the land that Moses was born into tried to kill all of the babies when he was born. When Moses was born. And the leader of the land that Jesus was born into tried to kill all of the babies when Jesus was born. Moses told people about the need for a Passover lamb. And Jesus became the Passover lamb. Moses chose 12 leaders to follow, and Jesus chose 12 leaders to follow. Moses gave his people a new identity as a people, and Jesus gave his people a new identity as a people. Moses is arguably the lead figure of the Old Testament, and Jesus is the lead figure of the New Testament. Moses led his people to the promised land, and Jesus leads his people to the promised land. Moses sent 12 spies to Canaan so he could bring people to the promised land, and Jesus sent 12 disciples to the world so he could bring people to the promised land. Moses appointed 70 rulers over Israel, and Jesus appointed 70 disciples to the nations. The people picked up stones to stone Moses, but they did not succeed. And the people picked up stones to stone Jesus, but they did not succeed. Moses controlled the waters of the Red Sea, and Jesus controlled the Sea of Galilee. Moses brought living water out of the rock, and Jesus brings living water to all of his believers. The face of Moses shone with glory on Mount Sinai. The face of Jesus shone with glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses lifted the brazen serpent up in the wilderness to heal people. And Jesus was lifted up on the cross to heal us from our own sins. Moses was a shepherd. Jesus was a good shepherd. Moses subdued an attacking army by raising his arms high on the top of a hill with two other people. 
beside him. Jesus subdued sin and death with arms raised high on a hill with two other people beside him. Moses fed thousands supernaturally with bread. Jesus fed thousands supernaturally with bread. Moses took a Gentile bride, and Jesus took a Gentile bride, the church. There is a long, silent, uh, long period of silence in the story of Moses from the time he was a child until adulthood, and there is a long period of silence in the story of Jesus from the time he was a child until adulthood. Moses showed compassion to a woman getting water at a well, and Jesus showed compassion to a woman getting water at a well. Moses' mission was to redeem Israel from slavery to Egypt, and Jesus' mission was to redeem mankind from slavery to sin. Moses gave God's law on a mountain, and Jesus gave the new law from the Mount of the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. Moses offered his life for the salvation of his people after the sin of the golden calf, and Jesus offered his life for the salvation of the world. Moses rejected a lavish, ruling lifestyle in the house of Pharaoh. Instead, he chose a humble life. Jesus gave up his heavenly abode and rejected the offers of Satan to be the ruler of this world and instead chose a humble life serving man. So, those are the similarities. So in a way, Moses, Moses represents Jesus. Uh, he's like a, an illustration of Jesus. In, um, in the Old Testament, in Exodus. So, we didn't have any specific questions about uh, Exodus, but if you think of some, you know, write them below in the comments or send me an email and uh, we'll see what we can do. So I, you know what, I'm going to close in prayer right now and ask God to continue to bless you guys as you read through his word. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this time that we can all read through your word, read through the Bible, and get to know you better. We get to know you, God, and we get to know ourselves. And we just ask, God, that you would bless each one that is going through this right now. And... Help them to find the time to spend each day in your word. Don't let them give up, God. Continue to work with them and help them find the time. We thank you so much, God, that you communicated with us, that you left this, this miraculous, wonderful book telling of how you have been in this world all along, helping us find you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody, hang in there. I'll send some more after we finish Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Bye-bye.